What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Panthers Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey May Larry. So in this episode, we're going to give a breakdown of my last three mock drafts. Two of them have been ready now for over a month or two. I had one that was ready after week 17 of the NFL season. And then I also made one after the AFC and NFC Championship games. And in that mock, it was 30 picks, but I just added in Kansas City and San Francisco yesterday. Since the end of the day, the first 30 picks were all in the right order, and then I just added Kansas City and San Francisco in. So I'll give a breakdown of those two mocks, and then I just made another one today. So let's start off with the one that was before Week 17. The Chicago Bears are the first overall pick, which that ends up being the case right now as well. But heading into Week 17, they had the first overall pick because the Carolina Panthers were 2-13. and And with this mock pick, I had the Bears taking Marvin Harrison Jr. out of Ohio State, a wide receiver that I think would be a great addition next to Justin Fields. At number two, the Arizona Cardinals were 3-12. and And in this trade here, I had the Cardinals trading the second overall pick for the fourth overall pick with the Patriots trading up. I have the Patriots selecting Drake May out of UNC. With a third overall pick, the Commanders were 4-11 and at this point. I have them taking Caleb Williams out of USC to be their next franchise quarterback. And then with the fourth overall pick, like I said, I have the Patriots trading up with the Arizona Cardinals. So with this fourth overall pick, I have the Cardinals taking Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. And this obviously would be a big mix-up considering a lot of people have the Cardinals taking Marvin Harrison Jr. But in this mock draft, I went with the Bears staying with Justin Fields. So I had the Bears taking Marvin Harrison Jr. at number one, and that would just mix up the rest of the draft. So that's why the Patriots would trade up, just to make sure they get their guy at quarterback, which would be Drake May. Then with the fifth overall pick, I have the New York Giants taking wide receiver Rome Odunze from Washington. I think he'd be a great addition to the offense. The Giants are 5-10 at this point in the season. The Chargers are 5-10 as well. They have the sixth overall pick in this mock draft. I had them taking Joe Alt, a tackle out of Notre Dame. I think he'd be a good addition to that offense. I think they need help for Justin Herbert in pass protection. I think he'd be a great addition to that offensive line. And number seven, the Tennessee Titans were 5-10. I have them taking offensive tackle J.C. Latham out of Alabama. At number eight, the Jets were 6-10. and 10. I have them trading down here with the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Raiders would be trading up to take quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. With the ninth overall pick, the Bears were 6-9 and nine at this point. I have them taking edge rusher Dallas Turner out of Alabama. With the tenth overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons, who were 7-8 and eight at this point, taking wide receiver Keon Coleman out of Florida State. In this case, I think they'd wait until the second round to get whatever quarterback falls, whether it's J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, or Michael Pratt. Coleman has been falling down some draft boards as of late. I'm still very high on him. I made this after week 17, so almost two months ago. So obviously a lot has changed in draft order, and obviously a lot of stock on guys is not the same anymore like it was two months ago. With the 11th overall pick, the Saints were 7-8 and eight at this point. I had them taking quarterback Michael Penix out of Washington. I know he struggled in the national championship game, but he never had to face a defense like Michigan. And at the end of the day, it's only one game. I still think he's going to be a stud in the NFL from the jump. I think he's the best quarterback in this draft. With the 12th overall pick, the Packers were 7-8 and eight at this point in the season. I had them taking edge rusher Chop Robinson out of Penn State. A lot of scouts were loving him a few months ago, but now he's falling down draft boards heavily. He's going to likely be a second rounder, according to a good amount of scouts, heading into the Combine. With the 13th overall pick, the Raiders were 7-8. and eight. I had them trading up with the Jets, so the Jets now own this 13th pick. And I have the Jets taking Omarius Mims, an offensive tackle out of Georgia. A lot of risk here, very similar to Mekhi Becton, a big guy that's battled injuries, but terrific upside if he were to pan out. And the Jets obviously need help on the offensive line to try to help Aaron Rodgers get time to throw. With the 14th overall pick, I have the Denver Broncos here, who was 7-8 at the time, taking edge rusher Jared Verse out of Florida State. With the 15th overall pick, the Vikings were 7-8. I have them taking defensive lineman Jerzon Newton out of Illinois. With the 16th overall pick, the Cardinals own this pick. It was the Texans pick, actually, who were 8-7 at this point in the season. But the Cardinals actually own this pick. I have them taking Malik Nabors out of LSU. With the 17th overall pick... I had the Pittsburgh Steelers taking cornerback Kaylin King out of Penn State with the 18th overall pick. I had the Cincinnati Bengals taking tight end Brock Bowers out of Georgia with the 19th overall pick. I had the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. And then with the 20th overall pick to round out this mock, I had the Indianapolis Colts taking edge rusher Leatu Latu out of UCLA. So the next mock that I'm going to go over is more updated. I made this after the AFC and NFC Championship games. And like I said, I just added in Kansas City and San Francisco's picks just to make it a full first-round mock. So we'll start off with the first overall pick. In this mock, I have the Bears trading down and keeping Justin Fields and trading down the Patriots. The Patriots would be trading up to take quarterback Drake May with the first overall pick. I would trade down if I were Chicago. This is what I would do. I know it's unlikely. So in my next mock draft, I actually have them trading Justin Fields and taking a quarterback with the first overall pick. But I would keep Justin Fields if I were Chicago. And ultimately, if they were to trade Justin Fields, I'd love to see him in Atlanta or Las Vegas. I would love to see him with either of those teams. Maybe Atlanta or Las Vegas sends a second and a fourth round pick to the Bears to get him. 
And then maybe his fifth-year options picked up, so that would guarantee two seasons he's under contract with this new team. That's a good sample size to figure out if he's the guy or not. I think Atlanta's the best destination for him. He's from Georgia, and that Atlanta Falcons team has weapons. Drake London, B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts, and hopefully they add another receiver. That team can be very dangerous with Justin Fields. I think Vegas and Atlanta are the two destinations I want either Michael Penix or Justin Fields to end up. I would love to see either of those guys in those two places. So in this mock, I have the Bears trading down and the Patriots trading up to get Drake May. With the second overall pick, I have the Commanders staying put. They were 4-13 this season. They own the second overall pick. I have them taking Caleb Williams, quarterback out of USC. I'm not the biggest fan of Caleb Williams. I think he's overrated, and I also think he's immature. And I know every single year there's always a consensus top guy that should be the first overall pick. But at the end of the day, that doesn't always pan out. Just because they're the number one consensus player on most draft boards doesn't mean that player is going to end up panning out. Every single year we see a guy that's supposed to be a top five pick that doesn't pan out. And I'm not too sure what Caleb Williams' career is going to look like, but I don't think he's going to be Patrick Mahomes like a lot of people like to say he's going to be. And honestly, there's a risk with all three of these top quarterbacks. Williams, May, and Jaden Daniels, there's a risk with all three of these guys. But I truly believe Michael Penix will be the best quarterback in this draft. And I'm not sure about Daniels versus Williams, but I think May's better than both of those guys as well. With the third overall pick, I have the Patriots trading up, like I said. So this would be the Chicago Bears pick, and I have them taking Marvin Harrison Jr. out of Ohio State. What would I do if I were the Bears? I've said it now like 10 times over the last month or two. I would build around Justin Fields, use the first overall pick to trade down, get draft capital to fuel their rebuild even more. And then if Fields doesn't work out, the Bears will be equipped with more and more draft picks that they could trade up in next year's draft if they wanted to, since they're going to have extra draft picks. With the fourth overall pick, I have the Cardinals staying put, and I have them taking offensive tackle Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. And the crazy thing is, the Patriots pick with the third pick is going to be a major difference maker in a lot of people's draft strategies. Because if the Patriots go quarterback at the third overall pick, that opens up Marvin Harrison Jr. to be there at the fourth overall pick probably for the Cardinals. Unless the Bears were to take him in a trade down, whatever it may be. But the Patriots are going to be a big, big swing pick in this draft. It's going to be a major difference maker for what a lot of teams do in this draft. In this draft, I have the Cardinals taking Joe Alt because Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't there. Obviously, the Bears are at risk to take him, but the Patriots are as well. What if Mac Jones comes back for one more season, they just try to run it with Mac Jones and try to build this offense for whether it be Mac Jones or the next quarterback after him. Maybe they try to build this offense to try to help the next quarterback. So the Patriots have a lot of options. With the fifth overall pick, the Chargers were 5-12 and to end the season. I have them taking Olu Fashanu in this mock draft, an offensive tackle out of Penn State. And like I said already, I think Justin Herbert needs help in pass protection. He needs more time to throw. He took a lot of hits this season. They need to fix that offensive line. Whether it's in the draft or free agency, they have no option but to fix that offensive line. With the sixth overall pick, I have the Giants, who was 6-11 this season, taking Romo Dunze out of Washington. I would love to see him in this offense. I think Daniel Jones would drive with him as his number one option. With the seventh overall pick, the Titans were 6-11. I have them taking Malik Navis out of LSU. With the eighth overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons, who were 7-10 this season, taking quarterback Michael Penix out of Washington. I think it'd be a fun offense to watch. Michael Penix, Drake London, B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts, and hopefully they add a receiver in the second round like Devontae Walker if he's there. That offense would take off. I'd be really excited to see Michael Penix in that Atlanta offense because I really do think they're just a quarterback away from making a run in the NFC. With the ninth overall pick, the Chicago Bears were 7-10 this season. I have them trading down here and Denver trading up to take quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. I'm not sure what Denver's going to do with Russell Wilson. And they try to go in a different direction. They need, obviously, a franchise quarterback to build around. Maybe they trade up here and get Jaden Daniels out of LSU if they're high on him. With the 10th overall pick, the Jets were 7-10. I have them taking Talise Fuaga, an offensive tackle out of Oregon State. Aaron Rodgers needs time to throw. They need to fix that offensive line. That's their biggest need this offseason. And Fuaga can also play a little bit on the inside, but I think he's going to be a tackle for them. And he'll also help in the run game. That's something the Jets need as well. They need help in the offensive line. There's no way around it. With the 11th overall pick, the Vikings were 7-10 this season. I have them taking defensive lineman Jerzon Newton out of Illinois. They need help on the defensive line, and I think he'd be a great addition. He's a guy that a lot of people are very high on. We'll see what he does in the combine, but he's been flying up draft boards over the last month or two. With the 12th overall pick, I have the Denver Broncos, who are 8-9, and nine, trading up with the Chicago Bears. Now the Bears own this pick in this mock draft, and I have the Bears taking offensive tackle J.C. Latham out of Alabama. No matter who the quarterback is, whether it's Justin Fields, Caleb Williams, even Jaden Daniels, they need help on the offensive line. There's no way around it with them either. The same thing goes for the Jets. Chicago needs help on the offensive line, no matter who the quarterback is. So I have them taking Latham out of Alabama. With the 13th overall pick, the Raiders were 8-9 in the season. I have them taking cornerback Terrion Arnold out of Alabama. They need help in that secondary. It's been a major weakness for them over the last few years. 
And getting Jack Jones at the end of the season was a good addition to their secondary. I think they add even more and get Terry on Arnold with a 13th overall pick. A guy that a lot of people are very high on, who I think is going to be a player in the NFL. With the 14th overall pick, the New Orleans Saints are 9-8 and this season. And I have them taking edge rusher Dallas Turner out of Alabama. I'm not really too sure what the Saints are going to do to try to fix their cap situation. Maybe they even have to trade a draft pick or two just to get somebody to chew money. That could be a potential case for them this offseason. But I do think they need to fix that defensive line a little. They added Brian Brzee in the draft last year. I think they add to it even more and get Dallas Turner out of Alabama. With the 15th overall pick, the Colts own this pick. They were 9-8 this season. I have them trading down with the Cincinnati Bengals. And I have the Bengals trading up here to take tight end Brock Bowers out of Georgia. They need help at the tight end position. And obviously Joe Burrow could use another weapon. I think that would be a great position for him to be in an offense with Jamar Chase. Hopefully T. Higgins that they can bring him back. And obviously Joe Burrow. That would be a tough offense to stop. With the 16th overall pick, I have the Seattle Seahawks, who went 9-8 and eight this season, taking edge rusher Jared Verse out of Florida State. If he has a big combine, I think he's going to fly up draft boards even more. He's a guy to keep your eye on. With the 17th overall pick, the Jackson Jaguars in 9-8 and eight this season. I have them taking Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. They need help in that secondary. And I definitely think it'll be something they address in the first round or two. With the 18th overall pick, the Bengals originally owned this pick. They were 9-8 and eight this season. I have them trading up with the Indianapolis Colts, and now this pick is owned by the Colts. And I have the Colts taking cornerback Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. Once again, another team that needs help in their secondary. And there's a lot of good defensive backs and offensive linemen in this draft. So you'll probably see a good amount of cornerbacks, wide receivers, and offensive linemen in the first round. So Nate Wiggins go to Indianapolis in this mock. With the 19th overall pick, I have the Rams, who are 10-7 and seven this season, Taking a defensive back, I have them taking Cameron Kinchins out of the U-Miami, a safety to help them in their secondary. With the 20th overall pick, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are 10-7 this season, trying to fix their secondary as well, and I have them taking Cooper DeGene out of Iowa. With the 21st overall pick, I have the Miami Dolphins, who are 11-6 this season, taking a safety, Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. They have a lot of decisions to make in the offseason. They could potentially move on from Xavier Howard, so I'd also watch out for Miami taking a cornerback here with this pick. With the 22nd overall pick, I have the Philadelphia Eagles taking Kamari Lasta out of Georgia. Every single year, the Eagles love adding Georgia players, and they do need help in their secondary. Lasseter is on the border of first round or second round, but I think with a good combine, he could find his way in the middle of the first round. With the 23rd overall pick, which was originally owned by the Cleveland Browns, but is owned by the Houston Texans, I have the Texans taking Amarius Mims out of Georgia, a tackle to help out C.J. Stroud. That's something they need to fix. Let's try to help him on the offensive line. Even with a poor offensive line this season, it wasn't really that great. He found a way to work his magic and obviously had a great season. But I think they do have to add to that offensive line to make sure he can stay upright and not get hurt. With the 24th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys are 12-5 and this season. Either taking Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo, a cornerback who I think will be an absolute baller in the NFL. I am very high on him. With the 25th overall pick, I have the Green Bay Packers taking offensive tackle Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. The Packers need to help their offensive line as well. Not really too sure what the future holds for longtime left tackle David Bakhtiari. So I think they go out and try to get an offensive tackle of the future, and that's Jordan Morgan with the 25th overall pick. With the 26th overall pick, the Bucks are 9-8. I have them taking edge rusher Leatu Latu out of UCLA. Somehow he fell all the way to 26 in this mock. Would be great value for the Bucks if they were to get him there. With the 27th overall pick, it was originally owned by the Houston Texans, who were 10-7, and seven, but the Cardinals own this pick, and I have the Cardinals taking edge rusher Braylon Trice out of Washington. He has been falling down some mock drafts, though, as of late. With the 28th overall pick, I have the Buffalo Bills, who were 11-6 and six this season, taking wide receiver Devontae Walker out of UNC. He reminds me of Des Bryant. I really am very high on this kid. I think he's going to be great, and I'm excited to see where he goes in the draft. I'm probably the biggest fan of Devontae Walker, Roma Dunze, and Keon Coleman. Those are my three receivers I'm the biggest fan of in this draft. And I do think there's a chance the Bills get rid of Stephon Diggs in the offseason if he were to request a trade or try to get out of there. So I do think Walker would be a great addition to that lineup. And I do think Walker's going to have a good combine, and I think he's going to fly up draft boards. He's a guy to watch out for over the next week or two. With the 29th overall pick, the Lions are 12-5. and I've been taking Kaywin King, a cornerback out of Penn State. With the 30th overall pick, I have the Ravens, who are 13-4 this season, adding A.D. Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas. Lamar Jackson needs another receiver in that offense. Zay Flowers is great out of the slot. He's a good option to have for Lamar, but I think they need to add a big receiver in that lineup. I think A.D. Mitchell would be a great addition for Lamar Jackson. With the 31st overall pick, I have the 49ers taking a cornerback, T.J. Tampa out of Iowa State. With the 32nd pick, I have the Kansas City Chiefs taking wide receiver Xavier Worthy out of Texas. Was close to going Troy Franklin out of Oregon with this pick, but I went with Worthy instead. I think he'd be a good addition for Patrick Mahomes. And now for my updated mock, which now I'm not going to give the records for all these teams since I already did that now in my first two mocks. So in this mock draft, this is an updated one I made today. So the first one I did in the episode, I made 
two months ago now almost, right before Week 17. Then the second mock draft I made right after the AFC Championship game, so just about a month ago now. And now this mock draft I just made today, so it's updated. And I'm going to give a rundown, 1 through 32. Not going to say the record since I already did so, and there's no trades in this mock here. So it'll probably be easy to follow. With the first overall pick, I have the Bears taking Caleb Williams out of USC, and I have them moving on from Justin Fields, trading him to Atlanta. So with the eighth overall pick, I do not have Atlanta taking a quarterback. I will tell you who I have them taking in just a minute. So the first overall pick, Caleb Williams to the Bears. The second overall pick, I have the Washington Commanders taking Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Even though Sam Howell had an okay season, they do have holes on the offensive line, so there's a chance, maybe a long shot chance they trade down and they try to fix the offensive line and try to build on Sam Howell. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I have them going out and getting Jaden Daniels, and obviously the offensive line will be a worry for them, but they do have a lot of money to spend this offseason. I do think the Washington Commanders, with a good offseason, a good draft, and good spending in free agency, I think this team can be somewhat decent next season. Eight or nine wins. And that's obviously a prediction based on hoping that they have a great offseason. If they don't, maybe that'll be lower. But right now, if they do everything perfectly, I think this team can be right around 500 next season. With the third overall pick, I have the New England Patriots taking Drake May out of UNC. In this situation, I was very close to the Patriots going Bobby Harrison and then really just mixing up the draft and just completely throwing off teams like the Cardinals in the Chargers. But I figure the Patriots need to get their quarterback of the future, so I have them going Drake May at number three, with the fourth overall pick, I have Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Cardinals. With the fifth overall selection, I have the Chargers taking Malik Nabors, a wide receiver out of LSU. I was very close to them going with an offensive lineman like I did in the first two mocks of this episode. But I had to make my buddy happy. Clip K74 on YouTube. Go check out his content. Talks everything NBA. And that was a lot of NFL content, too, over the last few months. He's a big fan of Malik Nabors. I'd love to see him in that offense. I do think they're going to move on from Mike Williams, so they're going to need a receiver to try to help out Justin Fields, and Nabors would be a good addition to that lineup. With the sixth overall pick, I have the Giants taking offensive tackle Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. With this pick here, Joe Alt would probably be the right tackle, and that means Evan Neal would have to move inside to guard, something that the Giants are probably going to have to do at some point if he continues to struggle. With the seventh overall pick, I have the Tennessee Titans taking Rome Odunze out of Washington. They need help at receiver. After trading A.J. Brown a couple years ago to the Philadelphia Eagles, they haven't had a number one receiver, and I think Romo Dunze would be the answer for them there. With the eighth overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons taking Dallas Turner and Edge Rusher out of Alabama. Edge is a need for the Atlanta Falcons as his cornerback and wide receiver, but I think Edge getting Dallas Turner here with the eighth pick would be great for the defense. With the ninth overall pick, I have the Bears taking Talise Fuaga, an offensive tackle out of Oregon State. With the first overall pick, I have them taking Caleb Williams. Now with the ninth overall pick, I have them helping Caleb Williams and adding an offensive lineman. With the 10th overall pick, I have the Jets taking Olu Fashanu, a tackle out of Penn State. That would be the best of both worlds for the Jets. Not only would they land an offensive lineman to help them right away, but they also wouldn't have to trade up in this situation, so I have them taking Fashanu at 10. With the 11th overall pick, I have the Minnesota Vikings taking Quinion Mitchell, a cornerback out of Toledo, a guy I am very high on, and they need help in their secondary with the 12th overall pick, I have the Broncos taking Leatu Latu and Edge Rusher out of UCLA. With the 13th overall pick, I have the Raiders taking Michael Penix, a quarterback out of Washington. Like I said, Atlanta and Las Vegas are two interesting destinations for quarterbacks this offseason. I'd love to see Justin Fields and Penix end up in both of those places. With the 14th overall pick, I have the Saints taking Byron Murphy, the second, a defensive lineman out of Texas. They do need help on their defensive line, but they do have a lot of holes to figure out and obviously have a whole cap situation to figure out this offseason. But I do think Byron Murphy could be a good pick for them at 14. With the 15th overall pick, I have the Colts taking Jerzon Newton, a defensive lineman out of Illinois. Defensive line is a need for them, as is offensive line in DB. I didn't want to go DB here with the 15th overall pick. I feel like they'd be reaching just a little bit. So I think a defensive lineman would be a good pick there for them. With the 16th overall pick, I have Brock Bowers out of Georgia going to the Seattle Seahawks. They do need help on the offensive line and obviously on the defensive line as well. But I do think Brock Bowers falling to 16 would be a good value pick for them, even though I'm not really as high on drafting tight ends early in the first round. I do think it's a position that's not really as valued. Brock Bowers falling to 16 could be good value for Seattle and would be a good addition to that lineup next to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. With a 17th overall pick, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Jackson Powers Johnson, a center out of Oregon. They do need help on the offensive line, so I would not be surprised with them going with a center or a guard in the first round. With the 18th overall pick, I have the Bengals taking J.C. Latham, a tackle out of Alabama. Once again, another team that needs help on the offensive line. With the 19th overall pick, I have the L.A. Rams taking Jared Verse, an edge rusher out of Florida State. They have a lot of needs, offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, DBs. But I have them going Jared Verse here with the 19th pick. Pair him next to Aaron Donald, that would be a great duo. 
with the 20th overall pick. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking Cooper DeGene, a cornerback out of Iowa. I was close to them going with a center if Jackson Powers Johnson fell. But in this situation here, he is already gone, so I have him taking a cornerback. With the 21st overall pick, I have the Miami Dolphins taking Terry on Arnold, a cornerback out of Alabama. I think cornerback is going to be a need for them, especially if Xavier Howard is gone. And Terry on Arnold falling to 21 would be great value for them there. With the 22nd overall pick, I have the Philadelphia Eagles taking Nate Wiggins, a cornerback out of Clemson. Cornerback is a major need for them this offseason. Darius Slay and James Bradbury are getting older, and that secondary did struggle this season. So I think adding Nate Wiggins to that lineup would be huge. With the 23rd overall pick, I have the Houston Texans taking Troy Franklin, a wide receiver out of Oregon. Wide receiver is a need for them, but I think linebacker, offensive line, those are two needs for them as well. But I think Troy Franklin, adding him next to Tank Dell and Nico Collins, that would be a great wide receiver trio there and a fun team to watch. And obviously it would help C.J. Stroud, so I do think that's something they could do is add a receiver in the first round. With the 24th overall pick, I have the Dallas Cowboys taking Kool-Aid McKinstry, a cornerback out of Alabama. The Cowboys do need help in their secondary. With the 25th overall pick, I have the Green Bay Packers taking Omarius Mims, a tackle out of Georgia. They do need help on the offensive line, a tackle. They also do need a defensive lineman and also a safety as well. But I have them taking a tackle here with the 25th pick. With the 26th pick, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking TJ Tampa, a cornerback out of Iowa State. Interesting seeing Tampa go to Tampa Bay. I do think they need help in their secondary. So I think Tampa could be a good pick there for them. With the 27th overall pick, I have the Arizona Cardinals taking Troy Fatanu, a tackle out of Washington. Offensive line is a major need for them. With the fourth overall pick, I have them going Marvin Harrison Jr. And now with the 27th pick, I have them adding to their offensive line. So two offensive picks here in the first round of Arizona. With the 28th overall pick, I have another tackle being taken. And that'll be the Buffalo Bills taking Tyler Guyton, a tackle out of Oklahoma. Offensive line is a need for them at the tackle position. They also probably need a lot of help in their secondary, especially if they get rid of a lot of guys that I mentioned yesterday in my salary cap episode. So maybe a defensive back could be the pick here at 28, but I have them taking Guyton out of Oklahoma to help on their offensive line. With the 29th pick, I have Kamari Lasseter, a cornerback out of Georgia, going to Detroit. They do need help in their secondary. With the 30th overall pick, I have the Baltimore Ravens taking a wide receiver, and that's Keon Coleman out of Florida State. Would love to see him with Lamar Jackson. With the 31st overall pick, I have the San Francisco 49ers taking Jordan Morgan, a tackle out of Arizona. And then with the 32nd overall pick, I have the Kansas City Chiefs taking A.D. Mitchell, a wide receiver out of Texas, to add a receiver to that offense to help out Patrick Mahomes. Wide receiver is a major issue for them this season. And even though they won the Super Bowl with a lot of drops this season, they're going to address a wide receiver position in the offseason, whether it's in free agency or in the draft. So here in this mock draft, I have them taking A.D. Mitchell, a guy that was very good at Texas, very good at Georgia. I think Patrick Mahomes would love to have him in that offense. Anyways, that'll wrap up this episode. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I do apologize for flying through this episode. Had to get through three mock drafts, two of them that I had ready for over a month and two months now. So I had to get those over with and obviously give you guys an updated mock as well. So I do apologize for going fast. But thank you guys for listening. Much appreciated as always. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.